Hi, this is Hamlet with Webicator. In this video, I'm going to show you a sample use of a file drop by converting data between CSV and JSON with FileDrop.js and with Papa Parse. FileDrop.js was authored by Proger, who has agreed to let us create this video on showing his file drop solution, which is available on his website at the URL shown on your screen. Now before we show the demo, let me briefly describe what CSV and JSON are. First, CSV is simply a file format that is widely known by users and businesses. As the acronym suggests, these types of files will contain a list of comma-separated values. We'll see a sample of that shortly. As for JSON, which is an acronym for JavaScript Object Notation, this is simply a lightweight, relatively easy to read data format. We'll see a sample of JSON data as well in a bit. Now for this demo, we'll need to download two libraries. One being the filedrop.js library itself. This is what will allow us to drop the files into an area of a web page. So I've already done so. And I have it right here on my desktop. Let me show you what we have. This is the file drop.css and then here the file drop-mint.js file. This is really all we need. And I got this from the file drop.js.org website. And I simply clicked on the download button here. The second library that we're going to need is a parser to parse the CSV data. We got that from a website, papaparse.com. If I go there, just click on the download button. Now again, Papa Parse will allow us to parse our CSV data, convert it to JSON, and vice versa. So in my desktop, I've placed all the Papa Parse library files here in this folder. I've also created two additional HTML files that will serve as the user interface to use both of these libraries. So let me briefly show you the end result. I'll start off using the CSV to JSON sample. I'll open it up in the browser. And now that I have the web file on my browser open, the instructions, as you can see, are pretty clear. We're simply going to drag and drop a CSV file into this area here. And then the JSON equivalent of that CSV data will show over here. So let's do that. But actually first, let's take a quick look at what the CSV data looks like before we run the demo. So this is a CSV sample file. I'm gonna open that up with Microsoft Excel. And this is my data here, simple enough. List of meat, vegetables, and dairy. Now we'll do the same thing with JSON data. It's the same data, but written in JSON format. I'll open that up with TextMeet. And here is what that looks like in JSON. All right, I'll close this out for now. I'll go back to my browser. And now I'm going to go ahead and drag and drop that CSV file there. So when I add it, you can see right away that it reads the CSV data and then converts it into JSON. But this is a little bit hard to read, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this and paste it into jsonlint.org so that it not only validates the JSON, but it makes it a little bit easier to read as well. Okay, let's go back to the demo. Now this time, we're going to do the same, but in reverse. So I'm going to go to that other HTML file that we created. And now we're in turn converting JSON into CSV. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to drop the JSON file here. And then the CSV data will show up here. And here it is. My JSON transformed into CSV data.
Let's take a quick look at how we were able to do this in the HTML file. What I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the file with Dreamweaver. And really as both HTML files are very similar in terms of coding and what they do, we're just going to look at one of them. So let's look at this uh, CSV to JSON.HTML. And here it is. We have it in split view. The left side showing the actual code and then the right hand side showing the markup result, the sign view. So notice right away that on lines 6 through 8, I'm including the file drop JavaScript and CSS files. And I'm also including the Papa Parse JavaScript file here. On line 13, I have the text area where we're going to drop the CSV file. Notice that it has an ID of drop CSV. This ID is going to be used right below in our JavaScript to reference this text area as the quote drop area end quote. Similarly, notice on line 16, which has an idea of JSON output. And, as you can probably guess, this ID will be used below by our JavaScript to reference the area in which to output the JSON after conversion. Then here on line 19, we're simply showing a link to the other demo where we do the opposite, namely convert JSON into CSV. I'm going to scroll down a little bit so that we can look at our script after the HTML markup. And really the magic starts to happen on the script shown here on lines 24 all the way to the bottom of the file, right around line 54. I'll scroll back up just a little bit so we can see the beginning of the script. Now you'll notice that we first declare our drop zone with the new command. And notice that we're passing the drop CSV ID to the file drop. And then we declare our JSON zone, again, referencing the element of ID JSON output. And then we declare our CB headers, referencing the has headers checkbox. And then we want to add a send event handler to the drop zone so that it reads the files data when the file is dropped and it creates the JSON out of it. You can see this on lines 29 through 37. Specifically though, lines 32 calls on our create JSON function when the file is read. The create JSON function, if I scroll down a little bit, you can see it right here on lines 39 through 48. Here, we grab the data being read from the CSV file and parse it using the Papa Parse library in order to then convert it into JSON format. Finally, notice that we've added a click event handler. Let me scroll down a little bit. We've added a click event handler to the has headers checkbox so that when click, the data is reconverted into JSON again but this time considering a header row in the CSV data file. Okay, and that is it for this video presentation. I hope you found it helpful. For a more in-depth look at this useful file drop tool, be sure to check out Proger's documentation on his website located at the URL shown on your screen.